Hello everybody, it's the Game Judge here, and many people are claiming that Dragon Age the Veil Guard is not an RPG, or that the RPG elements, rather, are being removed, and Dragon Age is losing its identity with Dragon Age the Veil Guard. But is this true? Is Dragon Age the Veil Guard really losing that RPG identity that we associate with the Dragon Age franchise? The answer to that question, in my opinion, is yes, and I want to talk about that today. And first, I think we have to define what RPG actually means. The literal definition definition is role-playing game, which a lot of modern games derive their RPG influence or inspiration from none other than Dungeons and Dragons, which was invented in 1974 by Gary Gygax and Dave Arnison. Challenge your imagination to come alive and to battle with the creatures of Dungeons and Dragons. These modern Western RPG fantasy games essentially stood on the shoulder of giants. And this is important because Bioware is one of those game companies that drew heavy inspiration and influence from Dungeons and Dragons. They even made some OG Baldur's Gate games in the past, which was heavily D&D influenced, and Dragon Age kind of carried that torch. This laid the foundation for what Dragon Age fans expect when it comes to what an RPG is. So for this next part, I want to talk about what these RPG elements are by taking a look at Dungeons and Dragons and seeing how Dragon Age the Veil Guard does in regards to keeping these true RPG elements intact compared to their past games. So we have a literal definition, but what does role-playing actually entail? Well, like Dungeons and Dragons, you have a fantasy setting slash world where you, the character, or characters interact in a world that can be narrative-driven in a linear way, or could be very much based on the decisions you make. In other words, you are in a fantasy world with a story that you're interacting with. We will call this part the story element of an RPG. So how does Dragon Age The Veil Guard do in regards to this RPG element? Well, we don't know a lot, but what we do know is they have removed things such as companions permanently leaving you. And this was according to a developer in this The Gamer article, and it reads, Dragon Age the Veil Guard's companions won't permanently leave your party, sticking with you no matter what. However, if you annoy them too much, they will take time off. So there will still be consequences for not getting along with them. This comes from a developer Q&A in a Discord server answering fans questions about the long awaited Dragon Age sequel. This is in contrast to past Dragon Age games where the choices you make can impact the world in a permanent way. Companions in Dragon Age Origins can leave or even die based on the choices you make. Granted, you can see that Bioware was starting to produce this in the third Dragon Age and Dragon Age Inquisition, where I believe only Blackwall could die. This could definitely be seen as reducing a player's choice and modifying or changing the world, an element that most Dragon Age fans associate with the traditional RPG elements of their past games and Dungeons and Dragons. They not only remove this part of your companions and potential story outcomes, but they also reduced the party size to three, including yourself, instead of four like past Dragon Age games. This was according to a Q&A on Discord with a couple of Dragon Age the Veil Guard developers, and this is what they had to say when asked about reducing the party size. Having two companions really allows them more visibility and presence. We've talked about the incredible depth and focus we put on fleshing out these companions. They're very fully realized. So here you really get to see them more clearly, you get to see them shine. This has come about from our testing. We just found that when you're playing in the combat system, when you're planning your strategies, two really felt like the right number to manage. So yeah, they're essentially making the argument that this will allow the companions to be more fleshed out with things like banter and their dialogue with you while traveling alongside you due to reducing the party size and allowing them to focus more on the details of the small number of companions that do exist in your party. So really, we can only take their word here as they haven't really provided any evidence of this. None of the trailers or anything that I'm aware of demonstrate this. To me, this kind of looks Looks like they're reducing something in Dragon Age and telling us to trust them essentially that this is for the betterment of the Dragon Age the Veil Guard companions. I mean, maybe they could say it allows them to add more banter or dialogue to the companions that you will be traveling with. But again, I see reduction with no evidence at this point. So I will remain skeptical. And these are just some of the potential story RPG elements that can be seen as being reduced. Speaking of reduced, the next part I want to talk about is character building or progression in an RPG. Now we know from Dungeons and Dragons and past Dragon Age games that you have something that we call attributes. And traditionally these are stats like strength, dexterity, constitution. And how this works is when you level up, you receive points to put into some of these stats. This was done in Dragon Age Origins and unfortunately was watered down in the third Dragon Age game, Inquisition. You still had the attributes in Inquisition, but the game automatically leveled the attributes up for you or the weapons just added to them. This is removing a layer of customization and role playing by taking the ability away from the player in my opinion. And the 
the reason I'm bringing this concern up is because I've seen nothing regarding how this works in Dragon Age the Veilguard. In fact, this screenshot here shows us the skill tree and this is from Rook Thorn, the character that we saw in the Dragon Age the Veilguard gameplay reveal. And as you can see here, what I want to highlight is we do see the character thing in the corner up here, but I don't know if this character thing is going to include, you know, things like strength, dexterity, constitution, those attributes. I haven't seen anything that's talked about that, so I am concerned about that, which is why I mention it. So the fact that they haven't said anything about these attributes and how they work with the character progression system does leave me a little worried. Like, are they just going to completely remove these, which would be a step even further from Dragon Age Inquisition, where, as I said before, that the stats were leveled up automatically, and maybe this means that they completely take away that ability finally in Dragon Age the Veilguard. Now, they at least give us a look at some of the things in the skill tree, such as the specialization. And as we can see here for the warrior, you have the death caller, evoker, and a spell blade. And if we go over to the next screenshot, you can see they have the skill tree as well with some of the abilities. And we can see here we have wall of fire. So since they haven't said anything about these attributes, I thought maybe that some of the skills you would see would perhaps add to these attributes and they could make this as a way to kind of level or customize your attributes. But when you look over at the screenshot here where they show you some of the skills, you can see with wall of fire, this skill, there's the type, the duration control, the damage 50, and then the cooldown, but it says nothing about adding to dexterity or strength. So a lot of this seems to be pointing to this element of attributes and leveling them up to be removed. So this leads me to my next part, and that is the traditional element of a skill tree that we usually have in a fantasy RPG game like Dragon Age. And one thing I noticed here is that I only see three active skills for your character in Dragon Age the Veilguard with the footage they have shown us, which is concerning because in the past games you had the ability to have eight active abilities from your skill tree, a reduction of five active skill abilities for those who can't do math. So again, this is something I see as a reduction in the elements of what makes an RPG, less agency and control over your character in the story. They could make the argument that this will allow them to focus more on the skills that you do have, but again, no evidence on how this will actually play out. And I think it's actually more about making Dragon Age the Veilguard more like an action RPG, but I'll talk more about that later. The next part I want to talk about is the combat RPG mechanics in the Dragon Age series that we've become accustomed to. Well, in Dragon Age of the Veilguard, they have removed tactical combat and replaced it with a pause menu, essentially, where you can choose what actions your characters takes, as has been confirmed that you will not have direct control of your companions, like in past Dragon Age games. Contrast this with the first Dragon Age, where you could go through tactics for each of your characters, or pause combat and have your characters take actions. Even Dragon Age Inquisition had a tactical mode where you can control your party members through pause combat and choose the actions you want them to take. So they have removed your ability to control your companions and they have removed the ability for tactical combat. Two character building RPG elements that have been traditionally associated with every Dragon Age game. So once again, to me, this is a reduction in the RPG elements that we expect for Dragon Age games. Now, I believe they're reducing these RPG elements for a reason. And that reason is because I believe they want Dragon Age to be more of an action game. We can see evidence of this according to an article by Game Informer with the game director of Dragon Age the Veilguard, Green Bush. And there's just a couple things I want to highlight that kind of speaks to that action direction that they're heading with Dragon Age the Veilguard. They talk about how your character will have a quick dash ability in combat. And this says here with this mechanic, players can pause a combo status with a dash to safety and continue the combo where they left off afterwards. Alongside the dash, there's parry for some classes, the ability to charge moves in a revamped healing system that allows players to quickly use potions by pressing right on the d-pad. She also says that each character will play the same in a way regardless of class and that you execute light and heavy attacks with the same buttons and interact with the combo wheel in the same way. So this is kind of saying like you're you have a quick attack and a dash ability and you can counter and parry and all these things. They're typically associated with an action game which is why I bring up the fact that it seems like Dragon Age the Veilguard is kind of moving away from the RPG elements of taking your time and strategizing and having that tactical combat and they're moving more towards a action-oriented 
fast gameplay. And one other thing I want to put out here is people said they were worried about Dragon Age the Veil Guard being too like like Marvel or DC or whatever. And I find it funny that in this interview with the Dragon Age game director where she's talking about some of the combat, she says that the warrior Quinari that hip fires and aims her shield to throw it like Captain America while hammering down big damage with a sword. I just find that interesting that people are worried about that and then the game director mentions something about Captain America. Not saying correlation equals causation necessarily, but uh, I'm just saying it's there. Not only this, but they increased the level cap to 50 compared to a max level of 25 in Dragon Age Origins, around 27 in Dragon Age 2, and 27 in Dragon Age Inquisition. And this speaks hack and slash grind action in my opinion. So overall, this signals to me that they're removing layers of customization that Dragon Age fans associate with an RPG and replacing it with more action-oriented elements. And I count this as another reduction of the RPG components. So the question was, is Dragon Age the Veilguard still an RPG? And based off what I've seen, I would say technically yes. It is still an RPG, but very much a watered down RPG compared to its predecessors in favor of becoming more like a hack and slash action oriented game. And I think people's concern about Dragon Age losing its RPG identity with Dragon Age the Veilguard is definitely valid based on all the reductions in the RPG elements that we see in Dragon Age the Veilguard. That's just my opinion though. Let me know in the comments below. Do you guys agree or disagree with me? Do you guys still think that Dragon Age the Veilguard is still an RPG or do you think it's more of a action oriented game based on what we've seen so far? Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all on the next one.